Hello everybody, welcome back to Miller Park Zoo. Uh, my name is Peter, this is Keeper Eric, who you all know. Uh, and we decided to do another live with you guys today for Cinco de Mayo and Giving Tuesday. We decided to showcase our venomous Mexican lizards. These are Gila monsters. Uh, we do have a pair of these uh, beautiful lizards here with us. Um, these animals are found uh, in the Sonoran Desert, in the Sonoran region of Mexico and up into the United States. Uh, now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, they are venomous. Uh, these are the only venomous lizard species uh, we have in the zoo, so we do take precautions with them. Uh, when we do handle them, it is uh, only done in controlled environments uh, such as this. We will uh, grab them safely behind the head. Uh, they do have a type of uh, they do have a type of venom uh, in their mouths, um, much like uh, venomous snakes. Uh, however, unlike venomous snakes, uh, they do not have fangs. Um, their venom is all in the bottom of their jaw, in venom glands that are kept in the lower section. Um, they're also what's called epistoglyphs, which means their venom is transmitted through biting and chewing, not through injecting. Uh, the venom is not made to hurt people. It's uh, made to help slow down their prey and for the food that they eat. That's not to say it's not dangerous if you were to get bit, uh, but nobody has ever, uh, since 1930, there have been no reported deaths due to Gila monster bites. And in fact, the recorded deaths prior uh, to 1930 were all due to intoxication. So that kind of tells you <laughs> how they are dangerous, but at the same time, as long as you're cautious with them, uh, they're fairly uh, harmless. Um, now, this is an adult. Uh, they grow to about two feet in length uh, at full maximum size. Um, they are reptiles, so they're cold-blooded animals, and living in the desert, uh, they spend a lot of their time uh, hiding from the heat. They're mostly uh, crepuscular animals, which means active at dawn and dusk. That's when they come out to do all of their hunting. Um, being reptiles, they don't need to eat every single day. Uh, they can go several weeks without finding food. And in fact, one, good, uh, one or two good meals can last a Gila monster almost an entire year without eating. On average, they eat uh, only about seven to eight times per year. Uh, here in captivity, we do feed them a little more often than that. We do have a controlled diet to space it out for them. They don't go into any type of hibernation or brumation. Uh, but we can show you the exhibit they live in. Uh, we decided to bring them out to get you guys a little bit closer view. Uh, but in here, we try to replicate a desert environment. So it's a lot of sand, a lot of rocks. That's where they would normally hide in the wild. Um, you do see a little box in there. Inside that box, we do put uh, some moistened moss. Uh, that's to help them with a the shed. If you guys look at the Gila monster here, you can actually see parts of his skin are starting to come off. That is a natural response. Uh, they do shed their skins just like other reptiles do. So uh, raising the humidity temporarily does help. Uh, get that skin off so it doesn't harm them as long as the skin is removed from their eyes and their toes uh, they stay nice and healthy um, you can tell the body condition uh, or health of a Gila monster by looking at his tail uh, the fatter the tail that's where they store all of their food stores so this is a nice healthy animal uh, with no issues there these animals are considered almost a threatened species they're not endangered uh, but they are being monitored. It is illegal to capture or kill these animals out in the wild. And in fact, both of these uh, Gila monsters that we have in Miller Park Zoo were uh, confiscations uh, from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Somebody uh, illegally had these animals as pets, and as so, they can't be released back into the wild. So they, we don't know how old they are. We just know they're uh, pretty much adults due to their size. Uh, and they will remain the rest of their lives in captivity because of that. So, guys, if you're out in the wild and you see something cool, just leave it there. That's, that's where it is. So this is a good lesson. Uh, I would love for these animals to be back out roaming in Arizona and Mexico, but unfortunately, they aren't able to do that anymore. Now, they do have that really cool coloration to them. Uh, they have that mottled, almost pink and orange dotting across their entire body. That's to help them blend into that desert environment and into the rocks. Uh, other animals do go after Gila monsters. Raptors, such as hawks and other birds, will go after them. Uh, coyotes and other uh, smaller mammals will go after Gila monsters. Um, so they, their main defense is actually to blend in. They're not an aggressive animal at all. 
they want to hide, they want to survive. So uh, even though they are venomous, the venom is only there to really help them eat. It's not made uh, really more as a defensive measure or as a, uh, a offensive measure. Now that's not to say if you don't get bit by them, it's not gonna hurt. Uh, their venom is uh, what's called hematoxic. It actually attacks the blood cells. So if you were to get bit by uh, one of these and he were to get some venom into you, it would cause massive swelling, massive uh, necrosis in the area of the bite. Uh, but like I said before, nobody in the past 100 years or so has died from a Gila monster bite, so they are relatively safe. And as you can see, uh, he is, this is a very calm animal. He's not being defensive or aggressive of me. I'm just holding him. He feels comfortable, so he's not trying to do anything. Um, but again, don't ever try to pick these animals up if you see them out in the wild. Just let them be. Captivity is a lot different uh, than wild animals. So, um, do you guys have any questions? There's no questions posting, just lots of they're my favorite and these are cool. Yeah, these are <laughs> really, really cool animals. Uh, they have an amazing sense of smell. Uh, as you can see, the second one sitting there sticking his tongue out, he's just checking out what is going on in the world. He's smelling all the new smells. They don't really get a chance to come out that often. Uh, we would never bring them out when we have guests in the zoo. Uh, this is really a special treat for you folks uh, here on Cinco de Mayo and Giving Tuesday. We wanted to give you show something a little special for you. And at the same time, like I said, uh, we want to make sure the animals are safe and guests are safe. So being a venomous animal, we would never allow them to come out like this uh, around untrained, uh, untrained guests. So very very cool animals we are very lucky to have them i am uh, always enthralled uh, oh. with reptiles kevin seven said you answered his question before he could even answer it ask it <laughs> awesome <laughs> awesome she likes grace come on okay <laughs> they're so cute they are very cute. We looked really hard to try to find a good animal to bring out for Cinco de Mayo. And we have a ton of, ton of animals from Latin America, but hardly any from Mexico for some reason. Just a couple, so these guys are definitely a good representative of the Mexican species. Trayvon would like to know what we feed them in, at the zoo. We feed them mostly mice. Uh, just like most of our snakes would eat mice, these guys are uh, completely carnivorous. They wouldn't eat any plants, so they get mice. And then one of the other things that uh, Gila monsters and beaded lizards are known to eat are eggs. So we will give them eggs every once in a while as a treat, and they do break those open and eat the yolks out of the middle. Elena would like to know what their names are. I We're open to either. open to good yeah. good Mexican yeah. names for them. We have never yeah. named these animals. Yeah, we yeah. So we have ideas. Always open to good ideas. You know what? Let's do this. It's Giving Tuesday. It's Giving Tuesday. Who right? It's Giving Tuesday. Everybody, put your put your names in two female names. We have veto, we have veto power. <laughs> we have veto power. And then if you make a donation, we'll draw out a couple of We'll consider names. some names. Yeah, as long as they're naming to be appropriate. <laughs> we, can't, we can't name an animal something that already is named that. But put your names in and put your, donate a little bit of money to the donate button and we'll, we'll uh, draw names out and if they're appropriate. We'll, <laughs> we'll name them that. Um, somebody would like to know how sharp their teeth are. So sharp enough that you don't want to get bit by them. Uh, their teeth are made for grabbing and holding on to their prey. They're not really made for uh, too much tearing and chewing. Um, but it is, uh, like I said, because you. they're venomous, yeah, they're uh, you can kind of see how small they are. They're made to open up the animal so the venom can get injected and then slow it down. These guys are like snakes and they will eat their prey whole. They don't chew it or rip any pieces off. They grab it put the venom in, and then when the animal is stunned and dead, they will swallow it whole. Cool. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Let me go. I'll put her down. So she will 
Leave Grace alone. <laughs> there you go. And then I wanted to grab this painting here. This is from our radiated tortoise. This is up. You can choose which way. Again, I think it's open <laughs> to interpretation. It's, right. it's artwork. Um, and we're giving this away this week. Uh, if you put sh any sort of donation in, we will draw your name on Sunday morning, and one of you will win this. And all of the money raised goes to our Zoological Society. Uh, if you watched our earlier live video, you saw Paula, our director of the Zoological Society, talking about what they do. And they're just a, a huge help to us. They, they buy us all sorts of stuff. They build us new exhibits. So really, we couldn't function without them. So every little bit of money that you give to the society, every membership you buy, every animal you adopt, helps the zoo out, help, literally helps the animals out. I think she just likes shoes. <laughs> it's possible. They, they probably have a really good smell. And remember this, if you've been watching our snake videos, the, the snake, the pythons, or the ca uh, king snake that Shannon had the other day, you'll know about their Jacobson's organ and how they're sensing all the chemicals in the air. So we smell funny because we have chemicals coming off of us, but our shoes probably smell amazing because of all the different exhibits we walk through and stuff. They probably smell like a million different animals and uh, all the outside animals and plants and stuff like that. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks for tuning Thanks in. Thanks for guys. tuning in, guys. Thanks for coming.